Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. In the last part we finished off Plague Knight's own stage starting off tier 2 and now for this dude. Ah, Polar Knight! I had some business I had to... No, wait, never mind, it's just a commoner. Ugh, forget the stupid order of no quarter. Maybe I just need a new angle, somewhere I can show up my big huge brain. Hey you! You're a scientist, right? You sure look like one, so if I beat you in a fight, then I'll become a scientist. Hey, I, I have no idea what you're going on about. <laughs> I see my natural science talents are already messing with your mind. Check out this string theory. Alright, next to the optional bosses is Baz here, designed by Matt and William, Super Best Friends Play. He's sort of a parody of Simon Belmont fighting wise in that he'll whip his whip at you and even swing on the chains at the top. But the big thing with Shovel Knight when you fight him is that he uses his whip above him as sort of a shield, and with Plague Knight you don't need to worry about that, so you can just kind of drain his health without a worry. Around half health he electrifies himself and will send out lightning in the four intercardinals every here and there, but it's not a lot to worry about with Plague Knight overall. <laughs> Looks like the only thing you should be hitting is the books! That's one more loss for the bears. I guess I'll just stay here since I ain't no good at nothing. I didn't ever want to hurt nobody that much. I just wanted to fit in somewhere. But you wouldn't know what that's like. Would you? And completely optionally, you can recruit him into your squad. <laughs> I know somewhere you'd fit right in. But you have to observe protocol. There's a uniform. No way, are you for real? Okay, let's do this. I promise I'll polish every beaker. Or am I thinking of flasks? Whatever, let's scrub down. I love it. Oh man, I look awesome. You won't regret this. See you back in the lab, Teach. I, I love this design for him. I don't know why. It's the right level of silly. With that out of the way, let's now head over to Travel Pond and see what the Chalice will do for Plague Knight here. Hello, Travel King. Looking vibrant as usual. Who has awakened me? Mortal, dost thou need... Wait a tick, Alchemist! News of thy villainy has reached the Trapple Pond. Be gone from this sacred grotto. But, uh, my liege, <laughs> I've actually come to learn to dance. See, I can only sort of twitch. Enough, disgraceful. Where is the motion? Where is the passion? Thou needst a miracle. Will thou receive the gift of rhythm, humble alchemist? Sure. As it so happens, we are miracle workers. No one is without hope. Places, everyone! And that's how it's done. A true dancer holds down to practice. I shall grant you my e-cause, but only for noble causes. Oh, uh, <laughs> certainly. Noble is my middle name. <laughs> I still require a nominal repentance fee for proper sanctification. Now, choose your e-call wisely. So, the Trouble King is actually where you get different armors for Plague Knight as opposed to an armorer. And they're kind of less varied in general than... Shovel Knights are, but they're still generally useful. I'm getting the Wardrobe here, which reduces the amount of knockback Plague Knight suffers when he gets hit, because he does have some pretty heavy knockback. The main drawback of it is it does give you a little bit of a slipperiness to your main control. 
So you have some momentum like Mega Man and Mega Man 1, or Mario and Mario 1. Yeah. Keep thy beak clean, O plagued one. Return if thou hast further need of my blessings. And now if we actually hold down, we actually have a full dance animation. Gee, I wonder why we have this, hmm? It's absurdly smooth, though. That's such a good rotation. Well, I'll be back here later on to buy the rest of those armors, because I am getting everything in the game, as we've covered before. For now, I'd say it's time for us to move on over to the village for the Potionarium and spend some money now that we fought Baz. Also, if you try to dance near Mona for, for some reason, I, I can't help but wonder why. Uh, Plague Knight gets a little embarrassed. Hmm. Yeah, I might as well buy the most expensive thing. In fact, I want to say it's like the second most expensive item you can buy from Mona, period. But now that we've also done Baz, he's here in the main HQ. Hey boss, I swapped these potions with the Magicist when she wasn't looking. She didn't have to pay for these, right? Here, take them! So after you've beaten the stage and come back here, Baz will always give you a free max out of tonics. Which is absurdly useful, because that means that's at least at minimum a thousand gold you're saving if you've used all of them. Or at maximum, rather. So, pretty worth doing. For now, it's time for us to head after Treasure Knight, though. Also, uh, since I just reminded myself about this, I forgot to mention it last time, but Mr. Hat was designed by Alexander Hetman Katsukides. Uh, since I've tried to name all of the directors of the day, the last LP and trying to do that here as well. So, this level's pretty fun as Plague Knight, because it's already a good kind of water level, and then it's a Mega Man kind of water level, where the water just makes your jumps really floaty. So if you partner that with both the Float Burst and Plague Knight's already very floaty gameplay with how far you can send yourself, you can ignore a lot of this the hazards in this stage. It's really fun. With that said, Tier 2 stages is definitely where they start to get a little bit on the longer side. Like, I'd say on average, Tier 1 stages are about 10 minutes long, Tier 2s are about 13, uh, Tier 3s are probably close to 20 in and of themselves from memory, at least if you're taking your time getting all the money you can along the way. If you don't, if you ignore a lot of these secrets and stuff, they're probably closer to 10 minutes universally. Not accounting for deaths, admittedly, on top of that. Shovel Knight stages are very much the type of stages where the first time you play them, you die a lot just because you're absorbing all the information, whereas on repeat playthroughs, you die a lot less. And Mega Man stages in general are like that as well. I remember dying a lot on my first playthrough of Mega Man 11, for instance. Uh, whereas afterwards, I didn't die nearly as much, except on maybe Tundra Man stage, but that's for reasons. Uh, the next game we're doing after this is also a case of that, uh, but I'll talk more about that when we get there. The part that can be kind of devastating about this stage is Plague Knight, even though, like I said, you can get really floating in the water, is that a lot of cases in this stage, they put a lot of spikes above you, and if you're not careful, those can trick you up with uh, Plague Knight's floatiness, because you'll under probably estimate, un probably underestimate rather, how far the bomb burst will send you vertically in the water, especially if you're holding the jump button, so be a little careful. It is kind of funny how much you can tell that a lot of the hazards for Plague Knight are just the ones for Shovel Knight again, because you got rooms like this where clearly Plague Knight can just jump over everything, but those are there because you need them. Oh god, that was close. You need those crabs for Shovel Knight to get over there. So, I know I already went over the bios of all the knights and characters back in Shovel Knight's campaign, but I might as well go over them again here, just for the sake of completeness, as well as in case people hadn't heard them before and because they didn't watch my Shovel of Hope playthrough two years back or so. Let's see, let's start in the order of the bosses we've taken out thus far. For those who don't know, like the Mega Man and Base bios for the Robot Masters from Mega Man 1 through and Base, uh, each of the major knights in the game has a bio that talks about their general personality as well as their likes and dislikes. For instance, King Knight isn't a king, he's a king-themed knight, but that doesn't stop him from making decrees, as the Lord Defender of Frydenmore Keep. He commands a formidable army of minions, experienced with repelling invaders who dare topple his malevolent monarchy. King Knight is a master of single combat, and because he's dressed to the nines at almost all times, he's always ready for a brutal coronation. Pros! As a commanding presence, charismatic, and as a snappy dresser. Cons, not actually a king. Whereas Spectre Knight, in life, he was a cruel and cunning warrior, and though, although his blood is now icy cold, he is no less formidable than as a phantasm. 
The most begrudgingly loyal knight of the Order, Spectre Knight follows the Enchantress only because she's capable of magically extending his undeath. Clutching a grim scythe in his shriveled claws, Spectre Knight commands his weapon with an uncommon cunning. And his next target is... Shovelman. Who? Uh, pros, tattered crimson cloak, a supernatural scythe, and he's immortal. Cons, he's overly sentimental and he tries too hard to act cool. Been there, been there. That was, uh, high school. Next up, a practitioner of the ancient code of chivalry, Shovel Knight can do almost anything with the signature weapon, the Shovel Blade. His ingenuity and quick thinking have won him many battles, even though his stature is small. Always honest and helpful, Shovel Knight lives by the creeds of chivalry. Slash mercilessly and dig tirelessly. Pros? He's kind-hearted, he's clever, and he's a master of the Shovel Blade. Cons, he's bound by the code of chivalry. And now we're on to Treasure Knight, the stage we're currently in. Towering over most of the Order of No Quarter, Treasure Knight is a tidal terror. A loner by nature, he rules the ocean as captain of the Iron Whale, a prototype underwater vessel. With his retractable anchor cannon and impermeable diving suit, he is at home on the sea floor where he spends his days hunting down ancient relics. Just keep your hands off his hard-earned lucre, or you'll find yourself floating home. Pros can handle extreme physical and mental pressure. Cons, he's greedy and unintelligible while wearing his helmet. And now for Plague Knight's usual level progression to get a little different. Uh, this is the only level where you get a Shovel Knight relic in the same place you get it as Shovel Knight. Uh, they had to move Chester to the new section because I guess they couldn't figure out a place to put the new section for Plague Knight earlier than this in the level. It's kind of a weird standout case, but at the same time, as you can see, that mini boss is not a problem as Plague Knight. Again, his moveset is absurdly good for taking out boss fights. Uh, it's anything else where he can be a little... Not hard, but definitely troublesome in some regards, I guess is the way to phrase it. But as you can see, getting the particular robe I did makes the knockback severely less offensive than it is uh, with just normal Plague Knight armor. And for having a little bit of Mario Brothers Lost Level Luigi physics, it's worth it. Plus, you can just cancel those physics slightly by just jumping or jumping frequently at the end of a platform. Not a big deal at all. Uh, on my first playthrough, I believe, I ended up using the first mail that you can buy from the Trouple King, more so than this one. The one that reduces the amount of money you lose upon death by half, I think. But that is mostly just because that is a very useful on first playthrough uh, mail type, because you don't know how much money you're gonna lose. <laughs> You don't know what you're going to be buying. Now that I do, it's nowhere near as useful overall. Plus, now I know the level design and how to handle Plague Knight better. I missed those two coins right there very frequently on my first playthrough. If memory serves, there were like two occasions I actively had to like look up on YouTube where the coins I was missing were. And I think it was right there and uh, probably the one at the bottom of the waterfall in the Forest to Fishing, now that I think about it. I got close in one other stage, but it turns out I was just an idiot and hadn't missed one in plain sight. But now we're coming up on one of my favorite sub-weapons for Plague Knight, actually. It's like the one I use the third most next to the Big Boom and the Surging Staff. Or Surging Strike, whichever it is. I... Uh, but more so for survivability than mobility or active offense. And it's admittedly something I was surprised wasn't in his native move set when I first played, but I guess looking back it kind of makes sense. <laughs> because this was a part of his boss fight, but it shouldn't be a part of his main move set. With Chester this time, we have the Vat. An explosive platform that you can create even when airborne. So you can place it down and then throw some stuff at it to make it cause a big explosion, and it'll make an explosion on the ground to begin with after a few seconds. But you can make it while airborne to just make a platform to prevent, to prevent yourself from falling into bottomless pits, into spikes, anything. It is relatively expensive for the power meter, even at max, of course, but it's really worth having around. I love it. With that, I basically have my main setup all set up. Uh, if I'm just venturing around, I'm using this particular casing setup that we already got going on. I probably have the... Uh, the Surging Strike on to help myself ascend further. If I'm about to fall, I'm gonna use the Vat, and if I'm at a boss fight, I'm using the Big Boo. Pretty damn safe. Looking at it, though, it is kind of interesting how this game designs its water levels, and this includes some of the other, uh, campaigns in that regard, where they almost follow, like, a Sonic the Hedgehog mentality for the water levels, in that 
the water levels aren't necessarily always filled with water, and Mega Man does this as well, technically, uh, on a lot of occasions, where you're only underwater maybe half the time here. The other times, the water is there, but it's usually not quite a hazard, but definitely not what you're meant to be interacting with, whereas in, like, a Sonic game, for instance, the water levels are usually routed out in such a way where if you stay on the top route and platform excellently, you can probably avoid all of the water. Because in Sonic, water's a hazard. <laughs> Uh, you can drown in it. Thankfully, I can't think of a Mega Man game where you actively drown in the water, except for maybe the ship computer in Mega Man Battle Network 5. I think that's the only one that I can think of at the moment, at least. There's probably at least one other. But I cannot think of it at this moment, or it's from a game I have yet to play. With that said, now that we have the Trample Kings, things we can purchase. Money is definitely going to be relatively good to hold on to for now, because each of those cloaks are pretty expensive. And on top of that, we're coming up on a point where we're going to be able to, I think, get the next upgrade set available from Mona. I think that's going to take another stage and a half, two stages. And that's going to be worth getting, because admittedly, the last set of upgrades is where some of the really good stuff is. Not my preferred stuff, but some of the good stuff, at least. And thankfully, now we're coming up on Treasure Knight himself. With that said, out of all the bosses that you encounter as Plague Knight, I'd say he's probably one of the easiest to get into a combo of. Uh, so he's not going to be sticking around for too long from memory. Uh, in fact, generally, the larger boss fights are probably ones that Plague Knight has the easiest time with. Let's see what he has to say. What's the matter, Plague Knight? Alchemy business slowing down? Here to make some coin. Or are the Order's coffers running dry? Can't you just synthesize all the fool's gold you want? Ha! Good guess, but no. It's something far more important than mere gold. <laughs> more important than gold? Now you're just being ridiculous. Get out of here, you bottom feeder. Ooh, your essence is shown. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if I help myself. Play- No, not Plague Knight. Treasure Knight likes to use his giant grappling hook to pull himself up to the walls and over to the ceiling. And he can slam himself down on the gold floor when he does that to make a gigantic wave on top of just shooting his grappling hook down into it. I think he can also throw some caltrops down the floor that will float around. But as you can see, uh, his health gets drained pretty quickly by the component powder setup. And sometimes you really underestimate the range of a mid-screen explosion from that thing. Hmm. And hey, that's another level down, and there's only one left in Tier 2, technically. We're technically around the halfway point in the game in that regard, but I think we're only going to be at the halfway point stage-wise a stage or two from now for reasons. Hello, Mona! You look like you lost a fight with a pond. Ocean, actually. Had to go liberate the essence of avarice. Nice place he's got down there. Never understood what he saw in gold. You could just make it from sawdust and mouse skulls. Some people do things the hard way. <laughs> Let's do some work. Only no, we're not, because all my money right now is being spent over at the Trample King from memory. In fact, I think I go liberate him of most of his wares if memory serves at this point. Plus, we got a gem level coming up as memory serves as well. And hey, I might as well get all the musical sheets we can over to uh, Percy there. You can tell whenever Oolong, by the way, unlocks a new song for you to play, whenever he does a little dance after Percy throws the paper in. If he doesn't, that means you haven't unlocked a new one yet with the amount you've given. So, let's see, which ones do we get this time? I believe, yeah, we get the treasure trappings, which, as I said earlier this part, late last, uh... Makes you drop half as much money when you die. And uh, I think I'd go straight for the Dandy Duds. Yes, the Dandy Duds are shiny and give you a glowing jump like your Mario at the end of 64. But that's all it does. It's gaudy just for the sake of gaudiness and to be a bit of a money sink. Because I think it's individually the most expensive purchase in any of the campaigns. With that said, uh, I'm good. I'm kind of surprised at how few money sinks these games have overall, having played all the campaigns now. Like, the closest you get is maybe something in King of Cards, 
just because there's more things to buy there, maybe. But again, it's been a bit. I, I, I forget if you can even buy the things I'm thinking of. I think you technically win them by doing the card minigame. I love this theme. The, the water level theme for Treasure Knight stage is really good. Mind you, uh, if you haven't figured it out by this point, the soundtrack's really great. Jake Kaufman is a fantastic composer, although I can't remember what he's done since Shovel Knight now that I think about it. Because I know he wasn't involved in, like, the later Shantae games. I think Shantae 5 is the first game he didn't do something in. Let's see, what's he been up to since Shovel Knight? Mighty Switch Force? Yeah, that tracks. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, Shovel Knight Dig, all right, Mina the Hollower. I'm seeing a pattern here, Vitamin Connection, uh, Cyber Shadow. Oh, wait, really? He did stuff on Cyber Shadow? Huh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Well, either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part six, we go after the final stage in tier two. See you guys then.